Welcome to the Beyond Barriers podcast. If you're an ambitious woman who wants to advance in leadership, then this podcast is for you. This podcast is co-hosted by Nikki Barua, digital innovator, serial entrepreneur, author, and speaker, and Monique Marquez, senior corporate leader, ex-Googler, and diversity expert. From inspiring stories to cutting edge strategies, you'll learn how to develop the skill set, mindset, and tool set to get future ready fast and accelerate your success. Hi, I'm Monica, your host for today's episode. Building connections is a critical skill set for career success. Most successful people would agree that the popular catchphrase, it's who you know, not what you know, rings true in daily life. The fact is, who you know might matter more, or at least be just as important as what you know in getting professional opportunities. Our guest, Rosa Gonzalez-Welton, Director of Product Management, Digital Acquisition, Growth, and Customer Success at ServiceNow, shares her career journey and why she believes creating and building connections is the key to learning, growing, and fostering relationships. As Director of Product Management, Rosa is responsible for creating experiences across the end-to-end customer journey from acquisition and growth through to customer success. Rosa also created her own lean-in circle for Latinas working in tech, a safe space for real talk, inspiration, and support. In this episode, Rosa shares why the best way to learn is by seizing opportunities, the benefits of investing in yourself, her decision framework, and how she gained access to influential leaders, sponsors, and mentors. Visit IamBeyondBarriers.com, where you'll find show notes and links to all the resources in this episode, including the best way to get in touch with Rosa. Hi, Rosa. Thank you so much for joining us on the Beyond Barriers podcast. We are thrilled to have you here. Um, I have, you know, followed you and learned so much about, you know, what you're doing. And uh, I just wanted to take the opportunity to kind of share your story with our listeners. So tell us a little bit about your journey and all of the great things that you're doing. Thank you. Great to be here, Monica. And my story starts in East LA. Grew up in East LA uh, to parents who'd immigrated from Mexico into the US. And through, uh, you know, my mom started with reading Cat in the Hat to me as a kid. Uh And Uh somehow years later, that translated into an acceptance to Yale. Um, (laughs) And at Yale, I did a lot of work in uh, in the, the, the student newspaper, the publications, it was actually, if I tracked my career back, there was a pivotal moment when I got a, a work study job mm-hmm. at the alumni magazine. And they said to me, Rosa, we've got this URL. We don't know what to do with it. They didn't, this was a while back. <laughs> and I, and they asked if I could create a website for them. And I said, yes, I can do it. And I went back to my dorm and my friend John taught me how to write HTML code because I didn't <laughs> know how to do it. And that really sparked an interest in getting something out into the world, getting feedback on it and learning from it. And I can track my career through you know, online content, e-commerce, marketplaces, and now at ServiceNow to that thrill of putting something out there and learning. And the key lesson I have took and I keep to this day is I can figure it out. And I really mm-hmm. like interesting problems. I love that. And I love the spirit of, you know, you jumped at the opportunity. And so we work with lots of women and the imposter syndrome and the self-doubt sometimes they self opt out of opportunities because they don't know. So like you've seen the research where a job description might have 10 things on there. Guys can check off four of them and be like, okay, I'll figure out the rest and they'll throw their name in, in the hat. But women will say no because they can't check all 10. So tell me a little bit about like, how did you, you know, muster up that courage? Like you said, they said, Hey, we have this URL. Can you build a website? And you said, yes, immediately. And knowing that I don't know the first thing to do, but I'm going to figure it out. So how did you, how did you learn that? How did you kind of foster that courage? There's definitely a scrappiness that I learned from my parents growing Uh up, you know, immigrant parents, they had different jobs that uh, by the time I was a teenager was selling uh, cassettes and CDs, Mm -hmm. Spanish language at a a flea market, a swap meet. Uh And I'd go and I'd help with my, my dad. And it was up to us to make the signs to figure out how to put things up. And Uh just that was uh, early market research and experimentation. If I look back (laughs) on it, 
Uh-huh. And so I, I still feel sometimes my husband will poke fun. He says, I try to MacGyver everything. But it was yes. because I grew up in this environment of we don't have unlimited resources. So we're going to make do and make it work. Mm-hmm. You know, it's so funny that you said that because one of my my moniker is MacGyver for the marginalized. You know, we we learn to figure that figure that thing out. And I learned that that's actually one of my biggest superpowers, even, you know, in companies that I worked at. It's just like we may not have had a lot of resources or people on the team, but we like figured it out. We were scrappy and just kind of like that 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 unique strength came out to play in it. I think that's fantastic. Now, you talk a little bit about how you. Um, discovered your strengths and kind of got that, you know, clarity around your career path and you kind of followed that through. Um, And we have a lot of women sometimes who, you know, struggle with that. So tell us a little bit about how you started honing in on, you know, even with that first work study job of like, you really enjoyed what you were doing and you kind of ran with it and then landed in organizations like eBay and all of these, you know, ServiceNow um, where you kind of built on that. So talk a little bit about that. What helped you gain that clarity? What's, I'm a big fan of self-assessment. Know mm-hmm. thyself. And uh-huh. for me, it comes from reading, talking, and writing. So there have been a few uh, artifacts that have helped me. One uh, was going through this book called Do What You Are. And it relies mm. on Myers-Briggs and uh, personality types. And one insight I got out of that was I like making lists and completing them. Uh And for some reason that took me into, okay, well then there's this project management, program management, you know, product Mm -hmm. management work. And so that tied into interesting problems again. And so I was able to go through it and then check myself. Uh, Mm -hmm. Am I, am I enjoying this? Is this playing to my strengths? The other piece talking to people, um, I, to your point about imposter syndrome, I don't see what I do well. Mm. And it, takes me many, many times hearing it from others to know that it's true because mm. is, and, 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 and there's a positive too. If something comes naturally to me, there's no effort for me to say, Oh gosh, I accomplished this superpower. Mm-hmm. It's there. And so listening to others with an open mind has helped there. And then mm-hmm. writing for me, I took, uh, was part of a coaching program in the fall. And part of that, initial work was finding my vision and my values. And I took me, you know, half an hour, an hour on a weekend, jotting it down, making notes, really converging and diverging on all the pieces so Mm -hmm. that I, at the end, I had five value words that really, like, I felt deep within me Mm -hmm. and a vision that would match up with that. And that, I think, has been a really pivotal for me in the last year and a half. That's fantastic. And what I love to hear is that you were proactive, you invested in yourself, you not only invested, I would say, you know, maybe financially, but you invested the time. And I think that's what a lot of us don't do is we don't invest enough in ourselves. And tell us a little bit about like, what really pushed you to realize that you needed to take that step to invest in yourself? I would say it was a a constant stream of what felt like under undershooting, mm. uh, feeling that I could have advanced faster, I could have learned something faster, and I didn't have the tools within me to do that. And so when I joined ServiceNow, I decided I'm going to find a coach for myself. Mm. You know, ServiceNow mm. didn't know me, they didn't know my track record, but I knew I had this gap. And so I interviewed several coaches and found one and out of pocket decided I'm going to spend $6,000 for this program to really ramp up as a performer. Mm-hmm. And good, good ending to the story, you know, n- n- a year later, when I was getting my performance review, the things that I was hearing that were really good uh, pieces of my performance uh-huh. were the things I'd been working on with my coach, almost verbatim. And it Fantastic. was just such a validation of the work, but it was also validated by a nice uh, grant of equity, more than 10 times what I had spent on the coaching. And wow. I credit I credit that financial boon to the investment I made in myself. 
Wow, that is fantastic. And that is that is a fantastic story and testament to the ROI of investing in yourself. And I think that's what, you know, a lot of us um, don't think about. Um, we will invest in all of these other things, but we're kind of the best investment. We'll have the best return on that money because it's, you know, it's hard earned, but you will also work the hardest for it. Now, you have been extremely involved in, you know, creating opportunities. And, and like you said, all of these things that you've learned, um, you have this um, philanthropic streak in you. And I know that you're very involved with uh, Lean in Latinas and, and Latinas in tech. Tell me a little bit about that and how important that community is for you. Community is super important for me because there's, a, there's a, always a risk of isolation, you know, in my work coming in uh, up through technology companies, uh, at one point I was in an automotive technology company. Talk about two heavily like <laughs> male dominated worlds coming together. I was very much the only one, the only woman, the only brown person, the only Latina. Mm-hmm. And so the feeling I get out of community with like minded people. Mm-hmm. Of- of, of, of many stripes, right? Uh, right? You know, people who like crossword puzzles, I love talking to uh, people who throw dinner parties, as well as my community of Latinas really helps buoy me up and gives me energy. And mm-hmm. so I feel this responsibility to give back, because I didn't have role models who looked like me as I was growing my mm-hmm. career. And mm-hmm. so I've made it a point uh, within the Lean in Latinas organization, I have a circle for Latinas in tech. Mm -hmm. And we can support each other. They tend to be early career women, which Mm -hmm. is, you know, my sweet spot. I love to connect them and to be a, a, be there for them. Mm -hmm. And it's also encouraged me to get my story out in the world. Mm -hmm. Last in in May of this year, I spoke at the women in product conference Mm -hmm. and my talk was on overcoming no. And part of it was being scrappy and figuring out a way through relationships and negotiation, how Mm -hmm. to do it. But it really was tied to my early experiences. When I was nine years old, I was a translator for my parents when we Mm. went to talk to the social worker, when we needed benefits to eat Mm -hmm. and to feed ourselves. And so I try to build on my real life experiences and be vulnerable there because that, I hope, encourages others to share their story as well. No, absolutely. I think the power of story is just, you can't even put a price on it. And, you know, what I love about, you know, you coming on the, on this show is that women get to hear your story. Others get to hear your story. And that is inspiration in and of itself of, you know, how you've been able to, um, like you said, make a name for yourself, your brand, and kind of share that story and be vulnerable and share that. Um, Tell me a little bit about, because, you know, culturally, you know, as a Latina, as, you know, as a woman, sometimes um, we are, we shy away from the self-promotion or, you know, telling the story and things like that. How did you, um, how did you overcome that and being able to kind of share your story and be vulnerable and kind of put it out there? How, how, how has it helped you and benefited you? I, I had help and I've benefited from coaching and through work therapy that helps me work through some of these self-limiting beliefs. Mm-hmm. Uh, growing up, my mom's nickname for me was Mi Trabajadora. <laughs> my little worker, uh-huh. my little worker. And so I got the idea. It's a valid idea that hard work is good, mm-hmm. but I, it also ingrained hard work is enough. Mm-hmm. And we know that right. working hard is not enough to get recognized and get ahead. And so that's where um, talking it out helped me figure out what is it that, do I really believe that? What is the evidence to support it? And how can I move outside of that? So that Mm -hmm. helped me at least identify when I was burrowing down the wrong path. Mm -hmm. The other piece that helped me is reframing vulnerability and achievement with the focus on who I'm influencing. Mm -hmm. And so the way I think about it is a title doesn't drive me. The next title, the next title, that's an empty feeling. But if I can have a wider role that reaches more people and has a wider impact on others like me and lifts them up, Mm -hmm. that's worth fighting for. Mm, I love that. I I love that. Now, tell me a little bit about um, 
you know, being you as you were probably first generation college, first generation corporate um, and being, you know, a, a young Latina coming into some of these male dominated spaces. Um, you know, how did you manage the, you know, self-limiting beliefs or feeling that sense of like, I don't belong here? Um, you know, how did you get through that? And how did you get, you know, if you faced any setbacks, how did you kind of keep pushing forward? Yeah, it's a constant learning. And I will say for a long time, I accepted being relegated to the corner or not listened mm-hmm. to. That was my experience and there was no one to question it and no one I could see was going through a different experience. And I, there was one time in my career where there was a leadership change and within months, what had been a pretty diverse team in terms of ages, backgrounds, races, Mm -hmm. et cetera, suddenly wasn't. Mm -hmm. And it was very clear that I was the odd man out. And it took me a while hitting my head against the wall to think and thinking, oh, if I just prove them wrong, if I just show that I can do this before I realized I'd lost that game before the buzzer went off and Mm. I left, but the impact on my confidence was extreme. Mm -hmm. And so that taught me, it was a hard one lesson. If I recognize a situation like that, where I'm not, where I'm only tolerated, but not valued, I need to get out. And that's what I try to to mentor and and coach others to recognize. Sometimes you're in a fight, you're not going to win, go where you're valued. Mm, I love that. And it's a little bit of, you know, there's a little bit of that decision making and weighing the risks, right? What's the upside? What's the downside? What is, you know, tell me a little bit about like, you know, what was your ritual in thinking? Like you said, you had that aha moment, but what helped you make that decision? Because that's a really hard decision. And we see a lot of people who just end up you know, staying and, and tolerating that. Right. But what, like, what helped you make that decision and say, okay, you know, it is scary, but I'm going to take that leap and go elsewhere. It's something I've refined over the years. And I, I think of it, it's a decision framework for opportunities Mm -hmm. so that I can spell out for myself what matters across many, many factors, Mm -hmm. title, comp, industry, the leader, And that helps me be more intentional because part two of the lesson is that I left this bad situation and I I ran from it to something that I hadn't thought through very well. Mm -hmm. So that was the bookend to the lesson of know when to leave, but also be intentional about about what you're going to. And Mm -hmm. so out of that very instructive year and a half, I have a now, you know, I know that a good leader is important, who values me, Mm -hmm. culture is super important. And then the ability to learn um, uh, something new to keep my brain occupied and and tickled Mm -hmm. is really important to me. Fantastic. Now you talked about the importance of listening to others and, and, you know, really taking feedback that others give you to hone in on your strengths. Um, And one of the things that we struggle with. And a lot of the women that I coach and we work with is that they, you know, are struggling to find mentors, mentees, sponsors that look like them. Um, And I feel like they're already kind of setting themselves up for a failure because there are very few people that look like them. Can you tell me, you know, what helped you gain access to influential leaders and sponsors and mentors? And did they look like you? And I I hear the same thing as someone said to me the other day. I only want to work for a company where the leaders are are not all white. Well, that's cutting yourself off from quite a lot of great companies and great leaders. Right. And so the way I've been able to access um, mentors and influencers are being open uh, about Mm -hmm. what I can offer and what kind of help I need. And a woman comes to mind, uh, and I, I worked with her at my last company where she was a GM. Then she left to have a, a C-suite role at a high growth company. Mm-hmm. And I pinged her maybe every nine months to a year, and we chat. And often it's a very specific question I have. I have mm-hmm. this job offer. Can you help me think through if it's the right thing? Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I'm struggling with hiring in this particular area. And what she has told me is, as she coaches me, she benefits 
by clarifying her own points of view. Right. So I would say one piece of advice to people who maybe are afraid of reaching out is people generally want to help. And yes. there is a benefit they get simply by mentoring or coaching others. Mm-hmm. In, in And I certainly, that's why I do it. I, I get a lot out of it, if not more than mm-hmm. my mentees. Yes. And you, um, as you talked about community, like the, the, you know, lean in Latinas, the Latinas in tech group. Um, one thing that I've noticed is community is so important, but one of the things that I feel, um, women, you know, don't tap into the power of that network. Like we shy away from asking or asking for help. Um, how, how did you get around, you know, from doing that? Because you've been very proactive, like you said, in reaching out to individuals with specific asks and specific questions. Um, how did you, you know, get over those feelings that we hear a lot of the women say, well, I don't want to feel like, you know, someone feels like I'm using them for some reason, or I'm taking advantage of the relationship. How do you balance that? Those feelings are still there. Mm-hmm. But what's stronger than the feeling is knowing and I put myself in their shoes, how would I feel if someone came to me with this kind of ask? Mm. And I I'll, sometimes I'll admit it's like, you know, jumping in a pool and closing my, my <laughs> nose, that's and closing my eyes. That's how it feels. I just have to do it. And the outcomes are generally positive enough that it reinforces the decision. Mm-hmm. So right. it's baby steps, it's moving beside outside of my comfort zone. And then just uh, trying it out, knowing that sometimes you'll get a yes, sometimes you get a no, and you keep going. Fantastic. What if you could pinpoint the invisible ceilings limiting your success? Imagine having clarity on your strengths and barriers so you can take action and gain unstoppable momentum to advance as a future ready leader. Well, that's exactly what the Beyond Barriers quiz will help you discover. You'll get your personalized score based on the 25 essential elements proven to accelerate success in the digital age, so you can understand what's holding you back and where to focus your efforts. The Beyond Barriers quiz is completely free and takes just a few minutes. Go to imbeyondbarriers.com slash quiz and take the quiz today. Now... I love to ask this question of all of our podcast guests because the women, you know, our listeners really do enjoy hearing about, you know, what are your daily habits or rituals that you feel help you stay successful and ahead of the game? Yes. And you, you have a great uh, podcast on habits. Uh, (laughs) And I came out of one of the great um, values from the coaching experience was creating a a daily ritual Mm -hmm. and Every morning I have, uh, you know, I I move, I try to get my blood flowing so that I can reduce stress and Mm -hmm. think sharper. And I also do a couple things. I set an intention for the day, often from my my values words or my clarity words. Mm -hmm. And I set three priorities for the day so that if it comes time to, you know, three, four o'clock slump, oh, I don't know what to do next. Oh, my priorities were decided by morning Rosa. So afternoon <laughs> Rosa knows what she can do. Uh huh. And, and a lot of that, there's a lot embedded there. And it's knowing what works for me in terms of my energy level and how it ties into particular types of work. You know, the hard conversation, the, the right, reaching out to people. I have to be in a certain mar- mindset to do that successfully. So I try to align to my own energy levels. Mm, that's that's powerful. And I think setting that intention daily um, really kind of gives you that North Star of what, what it is that you need to focus on for that day. And I love how you say that sometimes you get lost and then you realize, wait a minute, you set an intention this morning. So go back and, and kind of course correct. I think that is extremely valuable. Now, yes, I, I, would, I love the idea of doing things today for future Rosa. So, <laughs> it, it may be hard today, but future Rosa will appreciate it. Oh, that is fantastic, right? Setting yourself up for success, like thinking about how do you set the future Rosa up for success? That's fantastic. Yes. Now, you are definitely in an industry and you hold roles that are um 
ones that get impacted quite a bit by the digital disruption, things are always changing. How do you make sure that you're staying ahead of the curve and you are kind of growing with the with your role or with your industry? I it actually goes back to how I think about my own development and it's mm-hmm. reading, talking to people and trying things out. And a lot of what I've realized is important for me as a leader is continuing um, my development as a communicator and continuing my depth uh, in terms of business uh, growth and new technologies. And so Mm -hmm. I seek out podcasts. I'll have chats with people who are working in different areas Mm -hmm. and I'll I'll look for opportunities to practice. And Mm -hmm. experimentation is one of my top five values. Mm -hmm. And so that's where if, if there's something where I could try something out, I'll raise my hand and, and do it knowing that, again, baby steps and what practice makes better. <laughs> I'll keep trying uh, different things. I love that. Now, you one thing that you said about in- experimentation that really resonated with me is with experimentation, there's always failure. Um, how do you, you know, how do you embrace failure? Cause I know some people will take that. And like you said, if they're afraid of failure, they opt out or they set the bar really low and they don't really make the leaps and bounds they need to. Um, how do you, know, how do you foster that mindset of, of experimentation? What I've come to do is well, after an experiment, uh, whether it's successful or not, I, I think of about what I've learned from it. I'll mm-hmm. give you an example from uh, personal life. I uh-huh. love throwing dinner parties. Uh-huh. And uh, before the pandemic, I was throwing a dinner party every month. Uh-huh. To We'd invite a list of, I don't know, 300 people and we'd get 10 wow. to 15 uh-huh. at a time. Uh-huh. Some 10 to 15 that I couldn't predict going in. Uh-huh. And I, as a product manager, I set up different experiments. Well, what if I only gave myself so much time to cook? What if I tried meatless? What if I tried to do a stand up or a sit down, just different varieties of, of the experience uh-huh. so that I could hone in on what's the best, what's the best outcome with the least amount of input. Right. And so there were failures. We run out of food. Nobody <laughs> ate anything. One day a pizza guy got a call. Uh-huh. But at the end of the day, you know, I kept the big picture in mind and that was bringing people together to connect. So similarly in a professional experiment, the big picture is I'm trying something new that's going to somehow open the door for me to know if that's a direction I want to go or a direction I don't want to go. Yeah. You know, what I find fascinating is that you definitely are someone, you're like a queen connector and tell me what you get out of, like, you're always trying to connect dots and you, and I read somewhere about your dinners that you host these dinners in hopes of connecting people. It's not just for yourself. It's you're wanting to connect others. What's, what do you, what's the power in that for you? I get a lot of satisfaction out of seeing other people's lives enrich. Enriching is my number one value. Uh And I want life to be better, no matter how small our interaction is or how long it is. And mm-hmm. so I think of that as if I know an idea or a person that can help another person, I want to connect them. My favorite mm-hmm. part of these dinner parties is midway when everyone's talking in this buzz of conversation among a group of strangers uh-huh. who now can't, can't get the words out fast enough. They're so excited about talking with each other. That is so, so exciting to me. And I, I had lunch with uh, two friends last month and they met at one of my parties and mm-hmm. now they, you know, they live down the street from each other. They see each other all the time. I love seeing those kind of things happen. Mm-hmm. And I think the power of connections is so important. And I think people need to create opportunities like you, like what you're creating in terms of even within an organization, right? I find it fascinating with some of these, you know, um, through our Beyond Barriers Accelerator program, we have cohorts of women that were sometimes in one organization. We realize how little connection there is even between yeah. people within companies. And so they're like, oh, I had no idea that someone like that, like me, um, works, you know, in this other division. Um, and 
then to kind of like you say, see that that the beauty of that connection and how it fosters into them helping each other out in the organization and things like that. So I, you know, kudos to you for even going beyond the workplace and creating lots of uh, opportunities for connection in that, you know, in that place. Um, so final and question. I'll, I know, Monica, that, I will add. Yeah. I will add to that uh, for those, you know, listening who are early in their careers. One thing I tell my team is when, even if, if you're long established or new to a company, have, meet someone new every month, mm. um, go out, make an introduction. Now it's zoom before maybe it was a coffee. Uh, and I was at eBay for seven years and my uh-huh. husband would joke. He said, it seems like you get all your work done through coffees. <laughs> and there was truth to that because uh-huh. these informal meetings would help me understand what are the priorities across the organization? Where are investments happening? Who's doing well? Who's a leader I would like to follow? So that when the time came for change, then I would have these soft paths to follow. At least they weren't new cold leads, if you will. They weren't cold calls. They helped me. It was ongoing conversations. And so uh, I'll borrow a friend says when she joins a company, she makes 100 friends in 100 days. Oh, wow. I love that idea. Yeah. That's, that, I'm not there yet, but I love that idea that it's part of doing your job successfully is creating these networks internally. And in my experience, maybe one out of 50 uh, will, will say no and never, it will never happen. Most mm-hmm. people are very open to hearing about each other's work and, and getting to know someone at the office. That's a really powerful, like in a very tangible goal, meeting a person a month and, you know, time flies. So over the course of the year, that's 12 new people that you've met and you've learned about other parts of the organization that you would have never learned about because we get caught up in our own silos and our own like little, little world that you start making those connections and it broadens your frame of reference as well. I think that's so powerful. Now, I love to ask this because... You have definitely worked with lots of, um, you know, you've pulled together this community of Latinas in tech, and you've probably mentored and sponsored and coached a lot of, you know, young women early in their career. What is one, you know, what is one thing that you see them struggling with that you want to kind of just demystify and bust that myth of like, stop, shake it out. (laughs) Yes, yes. Well, part of my vision setting that I mentioned through this coaching program, one of the goals was I want to lift up Latinas in tech because I didn't have the role model. And so I waited and what came through my LinkedIn feed was outreach from people who were not Latinas. Uh And I was waiting and I thought, okay, I put myself in their shoes. I wasn't reaching out. I was afraid Uh of being rejected. So then I would have been proactive through my alumni organizations and on LinkedIn, looking for potential mentees. Mm -hmm. I realized it was like a business development thing. I had no no (laughs) demand for my supply. Uh And so one thing I would say is reach out, put put yourself out there, make Mm -hmm. the ask. It's not going to kill you. (laughs) (laughs) The worst thing that can happen is no. And most of the time in those situations, People are flattered when you reach out and you say, hey, I really admire what you're doing and I would really love to, you know, talk to you and ask you a couple of things of what's made you successful because I want to emulate those things. Most most of the time, like you said, nine times out of 10, you get a yes. Yes. Um, so definitely ask. I, I really love that. And I love how you looked at supply and demand and you were like, okay, how do I get out there and get more of them to, to uh, come to you? Well, again, kudos for all the work that you're doing in terms of paying it forward and helping these young Latinas really kind of um, find a place where there's a sense of belonging and finding, you know, a way to, you uh, you know, just interact with like-minded people that in and of itself builds the courage to kind of keep moving forward. So thank you again so much for your time. I know that our listeners are definitely going to want more. So what is the best way for our listeners to stay in contact with Rosa and how do they learn more about um, your Latinas in Tech group? Yes, uh, start with LinkedIn, Rosa Gonzalez Welton. And Latinas in Tech, I have a circle within the Lean In Latinas, and there's a a, a link within my LinkedIn profile. 
Awesome. Well, again, Rosa, thank you so much. I so I so appreciate the time that you've dedicated and I look forward to continued partnerships with you. Definitely. Thank you so much, Monica. Thank you for listening to the Beyond Barriers podcast. There are thousands of podcasts out there and we are so grateful that you've chosen to listen to ours. If you enjoyed the show, please leave us a rating and tell a friend about it and subscribe to get new episodes every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Visit IamBeyondBarriers.com where you'll find show notes, links, and the best way to connect with our guests. See you next episode.